are going to go over our morning work. I know some of you have not done much on this page. Now is your time to catch up, but I still want you to do the work, not just copy it, okay? Because this is all really good. Some of it's review for you. Some of it is new, but it's all good practice. Um, I'll try one of these. Uh, one of these other ones, but if it gets to be too... Try the rainbow. I'll try it. But if it gets to be too, uh, we get too much of a delay, then I'll have to go back to using a regular color. But Okay, so up here at the top, we have a word. It's a noun. Who knows what that word is? Jema? Pleasure. Pleasure. Again, it's a noun. It says, if you have a nice enjoyable feeling you have pleasure what is something fun you could do on a weekend to give you pleasure now again don't forget anytime you have a sentence story like this i want to see caps capitalization accuracy punctuation and spelling it should be a complete sentence and you should restate as well alex so what would give me pleasure is playing elegant piano okay perfect and you hear how she restated she said, what would give me pleasure is, Kylie. What would give me pleasure, pleasure, pleasure is playing with my puppy. Good. That's a good one, Jack. What would give me pleasure on the weekend is going to ice cream, Jack. Good. Very good. Aiden. Doesn't that give me pleasure is playing with my kitten? Okay, good. Briggs. It gives me pleasure to, and then continue from there. It gives me pleasure when I watch TV. Yes, that works too. That works too. That's good. Coach Schmidt? I put, um, what I can do to give me pleasure is I can ride my bike on the weekend. Good. Tama. Good. Make sure you've written it down. Anybody who's told me a sentence, I want that written down on that piece of paper. I want to see that written there. Abigail. Well, it gives me pleasure is to get a hand on my chocolate. It's to what? I need you guys to speak up a little bit. Say it again. To give me pleasure is to get a hand on my chocolate. Oh, okay. Madeline. To give me pleasure is to ride my scooter. Good. Now I want all these written down, but that is very good. That's exactly what I want to see. I want you to restate, just like all of you have done. And there are different ways of doing it, right? I want you to restate, and then answer the question. Brewer. What gives me pleasure is me riding a horse. Good. Make sure you have it written down. I want these sentences written on your paper. Good. Okay, so let's take a quick look over here. We have a couple different things going on, right? Uh, we have adjectives, we have uh, comparative words that have the ER at the end of those, and we also have superlatives. Superlatives, and I don't know if you guys have heard that word, we haven't talked too much about it, but those are words that have that EST at the end. They kind of go a little, a little extra, a little beyond, right? So you could say, and we will do this top one, red is the adjective, redder is the comparative, and the superlative would be, what would it be? Who knows? Ariana. Reddest. Reddest. So, and what would that mean? So, if the comparative is redder and the superlative is reddest, what does it mean? Jack? Speak up a little more. Exactly. Remember we just did these on, a, on a, what's this last, I think it was last week. We did the EST at the end, right? The superlatives with the EST. And we learned that that means the most. So this is the most red. Guys, what's an adjective again? 
What's the matter, Chef? I like Exactly. Something that describes something. And specifically, it describes a noun, right? So if I was to say, well, let's see, is anybody in here actually have red hair? Abigail has red hair. Oh, yeah. And of course, Heston's got red hair, too. We could make a comparison. We can, that's right. We can make a comparison. I mean, but it depends. See, here's the thing. Depends on what you mean by red, right? Abigail, is your hair dyed red or is it naturally red? Uh, it's dyed burgundy. Burgundy. My, pardon me. I don't know what burgundy is. Um, so, in the sun, it's red. In the sun, it's red. Okay. So we could say, we could say, Abigail's hair is red. Heston's hair is redder, but uh, Ronald McDonald's hair is the reddest. <laughs> what? That guy's freaky though. Because he has very red know. hair, right? Like okay, her. class, class. Bring it back around. Hey, one more time. Bring it back around. Okay, so let's look at this one. We have the superlative. It's wildest. So what's the adjective? Tell him. I don't think it's not the last one. Do you know he can dye his hair um, yellow? Um, he, can, he dyes his hair every color. Um, Dennis Rodney. Oh, uh, that's true. That is true. Okay, back to this, guys. What's the adjective that we're looking at when we have wildest as the superlative? Tava. Um, what? On this next one right here. If we have wildest is our superlative with the EST, what's the adjective? How do you spell what? Feral. Like feral cat? No, barrels. Oh, barrels. I thought you said ferals, like a feral cat. Barrels, well, how do you think you spell it? E-L-L-R-E-S. You've got a few of them sort of, sort of mixed up a little bit. You're getting there, though. But break it apart a little bit. Barrels. Barrels. You'd be looking at B A No B A R R E L S. That's a barrel. Barrels. Well, not really when you look at it. Bear rolls, right? B A R R E L S. Okay. Back to this though. You're right. It's wild. But what's the comparative then? If the noun or adjective, excuse me, if the adjective is wild, the superlative is wildest. What's the comparative word? Madeline. Wilder. 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 Pardon that extra green dot I just put in there by accident. Now, if our comparative is funnier, what's the adjective? Allie. Funny. Funny. And if now, if our adjective is funny, the comparative is funnier, the superlative is what? Bricks? Funny. Funniest, and how do you spell it? Exactly. And we're following that same rule here, right? We have to you have to drop that Y and add the I E S. Well, I E S T in this case, right? But you're dropping the Y. Drop the Y, add I E R. Drop the Y, add I E S T. Right? Andrew. Can you do what? Yes. All right. I want you guys to correct this sentence with me. I see. One, two. Oh, this is kind of a weird one too, right? It says, in the future, will I enjoy a voyage to Mars? So I see one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven errors in this one. I see seven errors in this sentence. What is the very first error, Ariana? Uh, that is true. Now, the is spelled correctly. Can you guys see this pen that I'm using? This is a request. Yeah, not really. No, not <laughs> is it hard really. to see this one? How? No. It's easy to see, they just don't want to write. You just want to see it because you think it's fun, because it's a fun one, right? 
Can I, I think it may be harder to see up here. Can you turn off the light? Uh, only the front one. Is that easier? No. no. Is it still hard to see oh, the... They just go like complete. Not all lights. No. Oh, perfect. No. Backlight on. Backlight on. Front light off. We have to have one light on. I don't want anybody sleeping in here. So you're telling me you guys can't see the rainbow pen? Not really. Not with the lights. Not with the lights. Oh, but with the lights off, it's perfectly fine. Is that what you're telling me? No. Yeah. <laughs> We used it for a little bit. I'll switch to a different one that you can probably see better. Brown one. We don't want. This I can't is not, see it. It's not brown. It looks like a dot. Because it is a dot. Please do not yell out. <laughs> we don't want okay, it. what's next? What's the next error? Right, next down. error. Teva. Future. Future spelled wrong. How do you spell it? F-U-T-U-R-E. That's really close. Tell me one more time. Spell it for me one more time. I think I might have misheard it. F-U-T-U-R-E. That is correct. That is correct. I did mishear you. That is correct. In the future. Is this one easier to see, guys? No, it's not. In the future. Yes, Tava, you did spell it correctly. Perfect. I misheard. Perfect. In the future. What's next? What's next? Brewer. The I after Will. Well, that I does need to be, she's right about that. That does need to be capitalized, but that's not, that's not the next error, though. There's another one. Jack? Uh, uh, I need to be more, uh, Jonah is, and then they need to be swapped around. They do. That is correct. There's one other thing right before that, though. He was correct about that. One other thing before that, breaks. Um, is there a comma? Yes, there is. In the future, comma. Now we're going to say, will Joya and I, Brewer's right, need to be capitalized, need to be capitalized. Now we're missing something else. What else is wrong? Voyage, Voyage is, spelled is spelled wrong. How do you spell it? What do you think? Um, how, do you, how do you think it's spelled? What do you write down on your paper? What do you write down? V. Mm -hmm. O. O. A. Love you, A. We still need that oi sound. Remember this the other day, guys? Remember when we talked about this the other day? We talked about what can make the oi sound. Briggs is dying to answer. Briggs, how do you spell it? Did you have two G's in there? D G? No, I, I I like where you're going with that, but there's no D in there. There's no D in there. There is just a G. Uh, Ian, what do you have? Uh, V O Y A G E. That's correct. Voyage. Remember what I talked about in the English language when we get that Y sound in the middle of a word like this? You're usually looking at a Y. Not an I. As and at the end too. Remember when we had that word enjoy, and they spelled it with an I. We had to switch it to a Y. Oh. That was in a different work uh, sheet last week. In the future, will Joya and I voyage to? What's the next problem? What's our next error here? Ian. Mars is capitalized. That is correct. It needs to be capitalized. And why does Mars need to be capitalized? Why does it need to be capitalized, Coach Schmidt? Because it's a place. It's a place, and it has, um, what's it called? What's it called when it's a place? Joel? What kind of noun is it? 
A proper noun. It's a proper noun. It has a name, right? What's our last error? What's our last error? Oh, good. I see a bunch of hands popping up. Heston. Question mark. In the future, will Joy and I board to Mars? Question mark? Because it's a question, right? Good. Jack, do you have a question? Can I answer one of the Well, yeah, what do you see? What's this one? You. That's you. With a capital Y. What's this word here, guys? It's a place, Jed. What did you think it was? Yukon. It is Yukon. Oh. And the Yukon is a place, but you might also be familiar with it as the name of a vehicle. Yeah. Well. But it is named, the vehicle is named after a place called the Yukon. What's this word right here? Come on, guys. Madeline. Yoshi. 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 Hi, Yoshi. There you go. You, Yukon, and Yoshi can use to those the uh, capital Y's there. Aiden, question. On Super Smash Bros, I would always say Iggy always worky, and I was always Yoshi. And there you go. Egg and just run over them. Okay. All right, let's take a look at these elements really quickly before we move on, because we need to move on to math. Uh, once again, we've got fracture. We had that word before, remember? It's a noun. It means a crack or a break. This time, they had you write a sentence about your connection to the word. I'm not going to go through them, because we don't have a lot of time to do that. But I do want a complete sentence again. Caps. Right? Capitalization, accuracy, punctuation, and spelling. I want you to give me a complete sentence. You could tell me something like, one time I fractured my arm. Or, uh, let's see, what else? What's another good example of that? Oh, my mom dropped her cell phone and fractured the, the front of it. Yeah, I see a lot of broken ones. Okay, I'm not taking examples of Okay, we are on the deep blue sea, another close reading. Now again, for this one, not only of course is it important for you guys to learn how to, to read anything that you're reading closely, it's also important because at this point, as far as I know, we are still taking the state test. You will be asked to do some very, very similar things on the state test. This is a really good practice. And I promise it won't be the only time you see anything like this. So, you got to get into good habits, good reading habits. This is one way of doing that. Because one of the most important things about reading is, it's not about how fast you read, how well you stop at, uh, at commas. Of course, we want to hear that. We want you to be fluent. We call that fluency, right? But one of the most important things about reading is if you understand what you're reading. Why else would you read if you didn't understand it, right? We read so that we can get information. This type of story right here, this text right here, call it a text or a reading passage, this right here is called an informational reading or informative reading because it's factual, it's not fiction, it's non-fiction, and it is to design to teach you something about a topic, just like the five second rule was. Five second rule though also asks you for your opinion. And that's a whole different type of writing, too. Opinion writing, right? Chloe mm. Schmidt, question. I finished my um, five-second rule. I'm glad to hear that, but focus on this right now, okay? And then you can turn that in. Ask me a question. Can I have a highlighter? Yes. Go ahead and grab one. I've got some right up here. And then I've got some crayons and uh, colored pencils over here if you guys need to grab one. Remember, they don't need to be the exact colors that it says on here. Just make sure that you keep track of what color you use, okay? Mallet, hey, did you have a question too? Or you just, okay, not a question. Do you want them all off? Nope. On. Oh, on, yes. No, no, no. Okay, who wants the lights on? Okay, turn on. Let's see what it's like. I think it might be better for right now. No. Okay. Class, class. Yes, yes. Jack, question. Can I get colors? Yeah, go ahead and grab. Wilkins, question. Can I grab colors? 
Okay, but hold on. I got. I also have a question for you guys. What happened to all those crayons that I've given you guys? Are you telling me you guys don't have those anymore? Uh huh. Yep. I gave you crayons at the very beginning of the school year, and I gave you crayons back in I think October again. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, guys, what I said. You do not have to get the same color that it says in there. Just keep track of what color you've used. Okay. So it's up to you, Briggs, if you want to grab some from over there, over here. Andrew, you want a highlighter? Yes. Now, remember what I said last time, too? I recommend highlighting in general or underlining, even with a pencil. If you find something in the reading that you think is interesting or important or that you want to remember, underline it. Underline it, circle the highlight. Same thing we do with math. If you're reading and you think, wow, this sounds important. I think this might be what the author wants me to know here. Circle it, highlight it, underline it. Get in the habit of it. You will do this throughout the entire time you're in school. And for those of you who decide to go to college, you'll do it in college too. So, well, that's up to you. But you might even do it. You might even do it when you're reading books. I know a lot of people will take notes in the books they're reading for things they want to remember. Okay? Okay, are all the hands up I have right now questions? No, I need a highlight. You need a highlight, grab one. Highlight, grab one. <laughs> there's some over there and there's some over there. Zoe. Can I get these to Abigail? No. Because you need that. Um, if she can borrow them from over there, which she did. Brewer. Can I get a highlighter? Yes. And there are some over here too. Highlighters as well. In fact, that's right here. There are highlighters in here. Yellow one. There's a couple of them around, but there's a couple left. Mallory. Are you telling me to bring my 64 pack of crayons? Can it fit inside your bin? Yes. If it can, then yes. That is up to you. Jack. Okay. I let her. <laughs> oh, close. Look it. We are doing it all together. I'm going to say it one more time. We are doing this all together. Talon, are you asking you? All together. Now, of course, you are going to be reading on your own as well because you'll probably have to go back and look at it. But we are going to do this together, so I want you guys to pay attention because I'm also going to go around and have all of you answer questions. We're going to try to do some of this together so we actually get it done and make sure you guys understand what you're doing. Because I had too many people who got stuck last time. Grace. Yes. Mel. Um, grab, uh, let me see if I... Hopefully this one still works. No? Close. You want to sharpen after bricks? Yes. Okay, here we go. Coach Schmidt. That does happen. That is true. Okay, here we go. We are starting. I'm going, okay, guys. Nobody should be talking right now. We are starting. Okay, now, uh, Allie's going to read our first paragraph for us. So you're going to come up here and read loudly and clearly, okay? So everybody can hear you. You want to stand up here? Or do you want to do it from there? Okay. Guys, I'm not going to address any more questions yet, okay? We're starting our reading. Unless you have any questions about this before we start, Tama? Can I earn you, you specifically want to read that one? Okay. So here, we'll make a little mark here. We've got Allie reading this one. Who's reading? You said D? D. Um, so there's too much good information in this. Yeah, I figured you'd like this one. Brewer. Can I read C and can I get the Sharpie You don't want to use it? Okay, go ahead and put it away. And uh, Madeline? Can I read E? Yep, oh. It's on the bottom. It is. Oh, no. 
That's right, I don't have the whole thing up on the screen, huh? Maybe you could zoom it out. Maybe I should make it a little bit smaller, huh? No, bigger. If I make it just a tiny bit smaller, we might be able to get the whole thing on the screen. There we go. Um, Schmidt. Um, Charlie, um, Pete? Yes. So obviously S and B are the two clothes, but they're the last names. Okay, guys. Like I said, they're obviously going to get a chance to participate today. Okay, Allie, loud and clear. Yes, please do. The deep blue sea. Our oceans are very large. They can stretch for thousands of miles from shore to shore. Some parts of the ocean are as much as seven miles deep. It could be very dark in those parts of the ocean because sunlight cannot go through so much water. Good. Now, I'm just underlining things I think are really important. Right? Oh, they, yeah. They can stretch for thousands of miles from shore to shore. Some parts of the ocean are as, as much as seven miles deep. Very dark in that part, right? I think that's important because the sunlight can't penetrate that deeply. That's why there are also some very strange, go ahead and go, very strange creatures living down in those parts. Zoe! Well, I have all the paragraphs actually already lined out. But I'm going to come back to you first when we get to the next page, okay? Now, Schmidt, I have you on this one. The temperature of the ocean watches different around the world. Some parts of the ocean are very warm and nice. Some parts of the ocean are very frigid. Good. So these are actually two really important hints. So now, if you remember, when you do these close readings, every single time you see an underlined word, that means that's a word they want you to define later. So you might want to take a, a close look at that paragraph as we look at it. I circled it. They usually want you to circle it as well. I also put some brackets around the first sentence part and here too because I'm seeing hints as to what frigid means. I see context clues. I see context clues. But I don't want anybody to talk about what it means yet. What's your question, Tyler? You didn't get them already? Okay, go grab them. Okay, now, uh, Brewer's going to forfeit her spot. Zoe, will you read this one for us? Good. So that's important, right? Sometimes the water is clear. Sometimes it looks blue. And then other times it looks dark, murky, and dirty because of sand that's stirred up by waves. That seems like important information to me. We're going to change this one to a Z. That's who ended up reading that one. Um, that seems pretty important. That's important information, I would say. And if you look at pictures of the ocean, it certainly does look different in different areas, right? Okay, do you guys know what the word murky means? Remember, you missed your section because you were in the bathroom, so I had to give it to Zoe. So let's come back to you. Do you guys know what murky means? Murky. Malin? Murky means all dirty. It means like, yeah, it kind of looks, uh, looks dirty, dark, maybe scary. Jack, what do you think? Creepy, could be creepy, right? You might hear in the context of like a scary woods. Scary woods, scary forest. Murky, dark. Right, Sellers? Once when I went to Mammoth, 
um, one of the lakes. It's like I, it's one. It's one of the best lakes I've went to there. And um, when you go out, like not that deep, but mm -hmm. just kind of right off the shore, um, you start feeling these weird bushes on your feet. Yeah, that can happen. And I bet the water could be kind of murky there too. Um, okay, Ian, did you have a question? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Teva. Next paragraph. Sound it out. It's three syllables. Three syllables. What do you think? What does it look like to you? Have you ever seen that word before? Has anybody seen that word before? Which one? Madeline? Enormous. It's enormous. Enormous. It is kind of a weird word. Do you know what it means? You guys know what it means? Table? Huge! Exactly. Okay, Taylor, go on. So that's got a lot of good, important information as well. You might even want to maybe highlight that some near live near the surface. You don't have to highlight what I do, but these are things I think are important. You might find these useful later. Some live in the very deep water. Some live near the surface. Sometimes they venture near the shores so we can see them. Sometimes they end up on the shores, on the beaches too, right? Briggs, sit down and look forward, not out the window. Okay, Madeline, you are on E. People enjoy field pursuits. We use them for many different reasons. Their first like to catch waves, others prefer to float on grass. You might see people tossing balls back and forth or leaping from under the water as they begin to be dolphins. Those may not even enter the water because that's true. Some people just hang out at the beach to get tan, right? But that's good. People enjoy oceans too, so we use the oceans as well. Exactly, for many reasons. So we share the oceans with the creatures that live there. So obviously we don't live in the oceans, but we use them. We use them. We just don't live in them like the animals that do. Talent. Oh my dad. And when he was younger, he was a surfer, and he was in, like, newspapers. Very cool. And all that. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, let's look at this one. Let's go to our first, uh, our first page here. First question is, Zoe, question. You forgot? Say a question. Yes, please do. I would actually recommend tearing out the reading and putting it side by side. So you can have it next to it so you can look back at what you've highlighted. Brewer, question. Yes, please do. Okay, I shouldn't hear any weird sounds. I'm hearing some weird sounds here. I shouldn't hear any humming or anything else. Now. This first question, what does the first question say? What does it say, Allie? Mm -hmm. You're on there, you're on the right page. Oh, okay. What's the first one asking us to do?
Exactly. It says write three questions and then you're going to color the answers in the text where you can find the answers to them. But you are writing your own questions here. Okay? Your own questions. Briggs. Yes, go ahead. We are writing our own questions in here. The first one says yellow, next one says blue, next one says orange. Now, these are up to you, and like I said, you don't even necessarily have to use those colors. Just make sure that you're writing down what you are using so you know where you found your answers. You want to talk about some example questions? What is a question that we could use here? Um, Nick, go ahead and go. Aiden, what's the question? How deep does the ocean go? How deep is the ocean? Can we find an answer to that? In which paragraph? You saw it. You know you saw it. Which one was it in? The first. Perfect. So make sure you go back up and you highlight that one if that's going to be your question. So that's a good one. How deep can the ocean be? That's a good one, right? How deep can the ocean be? Now we saw that one. We saw it up here. We didn't see how far. It wasn't the one about how far it can stretch. It was, what's the sentence that tells us how deep the ocean can be? Sellers. Well, I have two things. Well, I want you to answer my question. Seven miles deep. Seven miles deep. Exactly. Right and here. The other thing was that um. What was it? Now I circled it because I, I already underlined it. How but. deep can the ocean sometimes go? Mm -hmm. Because they could go way deeper than seven yes. miles. Yes. And this so is like, what it says. It says some parts of the ocean are as much as seven miles deep. So that's why when I phrased the question the way that I put it was. How deep can the ocean be? Because they could go down to something called the abyss, which is the yes. darkest area. Very dark. You are absolutely correct. What is another one, Zoe? Is the ocean big? Is the ocean big? Let's change that to blue. Is the ocean big, or you could write, how big can the ocean be, or even how long can the ocean be? Those are options for that, right? What's another one? Have we go. Can sunlight go through water? Well, it can, right? But are we looking at it? Can it go through dark parts of water? What are you asking about the highlighter? Yeah. You want to put it away? Yes. I don't think this will let me. Maybe it will let me scroll up. Ooh, too far. I went way too far. There we go. There it is. So let's see we have how big. Yeah, our oceans are very large. They can stretch for thousands of miles from shore to shore, so, so that's a good one. That's a good one. Now keep in mind, guys, you can ask questions that aren't just found in the very first paragraph. I didn't. I didn't ask them all of them. No, no, I'm not suggesting that all of you have. I'm just saying I've gotten a lot from there. Now we go had one about uh, how far sunlight can go. What about, what's another one, Heston? I have a question. What's your question? Can the ocean be dark from octopuses or squids? Ink? From the ink? It won't make the ocean dark. But it, it uh, does. Say that again? It will make a little cloud of. There, yeah, there'd be more like yeah, a cloud and then it would dissipate. It'll make a surrounding dark. So kind of like, um, kind of like when you see. Well, you can actually, we could actually do an experiment with ink and water. 
Um, so maybe we'll do something like that. If you take a drop of ink, guys, please stop speaking up. If you take a drop of ink and put it in the water, it will be, there'll be a dark cloud for a minute and then it will start to spread out. Now, if you had enough of it, of course, but to make the whole ocean dark because of uh, squid ink, it would, man, you would need, you would need a lot, a lot, more than a million squids. And they would need to be a much smaller area. Guys, please stop calling out. Mal, a question. What's your question for this one? I don't have a question for that. Well, give me one. What? What's your question? I know an anglerfish is a thing, but what's the name of this, like, this long fish that goes up its body and it are you talking about? You're talking about uh, one of the fish from the, uh, the the deeper parts of the ocean, the ones that are it's called bioluminescence. That's how they their bodies light up. And you're talking about the one, uh, not the you're not talking about the angler fish. Oh, no, I know what it is. Sellers thinks he knows what it is. What well, is it? I've read about bioluminescence in like the first time we ever started this kind, like the. Um, Kind of um, tablet school and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's should I believe it's kind of like invisible, right? It's like black and it has like lights on it. Bobby, yeah, it has, it's called um. It goes no, it's called like a dragonfish, I think. No, it's not a dragonfish. Well, that a dragonfish is in the deeper area. It does it's have lights. And the first two, too. And they look really good. We'll creepy. have to look it up. We'll have to look it up. Okay, but I need a question for this next one, guys. Something from the text. For, something we can answer in the text. If your hand's up for that, keep it up. If it's not, put it down. Jed. How big is a whale? Now, keep in mind, we're not going to get an exact answer to that in the text because it didn't give us all the information that we need. I went too far down again. But it did tell us right here. It doesn't tell us the exact length. And remember, we're only looking for things we can find in the text, but it does tell us they can be enormous. So you can find the answer right here. They can be enormous. So there you've got yours right there. Now, let's take a quick look at this one. Because this right here is completely answered in the text. And remember, I need to see a complete sentence. You decide evidence, reset the question again. Remember, put on your riding caps. Get ready to race for all of these because you are going to. Restate, answer, cite, and explain. And of course, you're always going to write in complete sentences. Heston. The sun can't reach that far in the water. The sunlight cannot reach that deep, right? The sunlight. Well, here's the thing, though. Whoop. Let's go back. His answer is correct. But we need, we need to write that restating the question. We need to restate the question and write that answer. How do we do it? How do we do it? Briggs. Um, a, reason is a reason for what? A reason why the ocean might appear dark is because the ice cannot reach That's very good. The reason why. Yeah, the reason why the ocean might appear dark is because sunlight cannot reach, and I'm going to say the deepest places. So I just used a superlative, right? The deepest places. Those are even deeper than deep, and deeper than deeper, right? Very good, guys. And good working together on that. Very good. Wilkins. Yes.
Hit it. Do James squids exist? Yes, they do. Okay, we're moving on there, guys. Focus on this for now. Not we are not snap. talking about giant squid. Okay. Now we're on this one, right? One to three words that are the topic of each of the following paragraphs. This time, unlike last time, they're asking only, only asking you for two different paragraphs. So all we have to do is we have to go back up to those paragraphs, right? Go back up. And they asked us, which paragraph was the first one? What's the first paragraph they asked us for? What does it say? On this page? What does it say? Yeah, that's not a complete sentence. B and D. B and D. Madeline, B. Madeline, B. For what? Is it from the text? Yes. What is it? Good. Thank you, Madeline. You are correct. She is correct. It does say that. Sometimes the water is dark and murky because it's dirty from the sand stirred up by the waves. She is absolutely correct. Thank you, Madeline. That is another option. Do you see how she found a different piece of information, a different part? Absolutely. Both of those came from inside the text, right? Because it says right here, dark in those parts here, but it also says it can be dark because it can be murky and dirty from the sand. Thank you, Madeline. Um, now, for, what did I say, B and D? Yes. Nick. What sentence does the second one say? What sentence does the second one say? What are we talking about? Are you asking? Well, I want you to come up with your own question. It doesn't have to be mine. It doesn't have to be mine. Yes. Come up with your own question that you can answer better. It doesn't have to be the one that I have. You guys don't have to copy what I have. In fact, I would rather you not. But we are going through it together. So you certainly can, I'll pull it back up. But I want you guys to get in the habit of coming with your own questions for these. But I want to know, is it B and D? Are they asking us for B and D? B and D, yes. I need one to three words to tell us about the topic for B. One to three words, go ahead. One to three words for the topic for B. Topic for B. One to three words for the topic for B. You see some hands going up, but I have some people I haven't heard from in a little while. Some people that might need to answer a little bit. Abigail, what's one, what, give us one, two, three words to tell us about B. Water. You said the water. water, the water. It is not water, I mean it is, what else? We go. It's a warm and cold water. Cool, and I think she might have also just given us a little hint about the meaning of frigid too, right? Well, let's look at that. Let's go down. So that was what I would, I actually do think that warm and cold Water, I do think that uh, those are good options for the topic of that paragraph. Jack, what about D? Yes, go ahead. Somebody tell me D. Jack, what are a couple good words for D? Creep, uh, about creatures. Creatures? Let's go over look at it. So D, yeah. Home to many different species of animals, right? So we could say, we've got that, different animals, different sized animals. You could write any of those down, right? Let's say, different different species, different animals. Um, yes, you can go. Different species, different animals. Um, you know what species are, right? As soon as he's back here. You guys know what different species are? 
Essa? They are, and they are different. They are, have, okay, so if we break it down a little bit more, there is, they are all part of a, I'm trying to say this in a way that's not too complicated. They, they are part of the same family because those two are part, they are called encephalopods. And, um, and that is a good, it's a, it's a good example, but think, think more broadly than that. Wouldn't uh, something like an octopus and, do you think an octopus and a shark would be the same species? Um, As, yeah, that was say. Octopus and shark, those are two different species. Mm -hmm. Completely different, right? Completely different, not even related. They both have eyes. Eyes? Yeah. Most creatures do. Not all, but most do. Most of them do. Okay. Let's move on. Now, underline three. Please stop speaking out. We have underlined three important words in the text. Well, I've underlined a lot of stuff. So you guys are probably already covered on that one. But I want you to go back also and take a look and see, are there any three words that you think are really important in terms of understanding? Are there three words that you think are really important when you go back up into that reading? What do you guys think? Out of everything that you've seen here, three words that you think are really important, Aiden. Uh, two things. Are we doing the other reading our book? Uh, later today, you're asking for doing the reading? Yeah. If we have time for it, because we're also going to do the story. Uh, Taba, as soon as Ali is back, you can go. Mm -hmm. This has been gone for a little while. Mallory. I Good. A couple of those were already done, right? Enter and, and that by Murphy. That was a good one. Good. Any words that you think are important, guys? Underline three words you think are important. A couple of them are already underlined, but you already know those are important, right? That means that those are important words. Let's take a look down below. What does it mean when it says to summarize, guys? What does summarize mean, Ariana? Um, Say it one more time louder. To um, read a story in a couple of sentences. Yeah. You're going to retell the story in just a few sentences, right? Just a short paragraph. So really all you're trying to do here is tell me what you just read in your own words. As soon as Briggs is back. In your own words. Tell it. We just read about ocean animals and how deep the sea can be and um, like all that stuff. Write it down. Except for the part where you said and all that stuff. Don't write that part down. Be more specific. But yes. Have a go. No, you need to be following along. Did I not just have this conversation with you all, probably about maybe a half hour ago, where I said I don't care if you're done with something, if we are doing something as a group, you are also working on it. I did say that. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here and that we all have understanding. So if I come around and one of you has told me you're done and I come around and I see an incomplete sentence, then I'm going to know you weren't paying attention. Um, as soon as Briggs is back. Oh wait, who did I say? Sorry, as soon as Aiden is back after Briggs. Then we'll be in and then we'll watch out. Okay. So, that means that you can tell me what you wrote there, Abigail. What did you write to summarize? Read me what you wrote. Abigail, read me what you wrote there. I can't hear anything you're saying. So you mean you didn't do this part? So even worse, that's the same thing I asked you guys earlier. Do not tell me you did things you didn't do. I will see that later, and I will give you nice big fat zeros for grades, okay? And I don't want to do that. So be honest with me. Um, as soon as Tava's back, you can go. Jack! Do I 
tell me what you think. If you were going to tell me, so if I said to you, hey, Jack, I know you read that Deep Blue Sea uh, article. What was it about? What would you say to me? Okay, good. How deep the ocean is. And how deep the ocean is. Good. Just make sure you've got complete sentences, punctuation. But good. Same thing. So, Kylie, if I said to you, hey, I know you read this article about the deep blue sea. I haven't read it. What was it about? that down make sure you've got a couple sentences so I just want to see maybe two to three sentences in that section okay it doesn't have to be like a full full three paragraphs like we've been writing or anything but I do want to see at least two to three sentences there I think you could tell me how what it's about in two to three I'd like to see three to four but if you can do it in two to three that's okay but it needs to have they need to be complete sentences and you need to have punctuation Brewer you want to close the door okay not all the way but yes just so we can have some air coming in. Yes, Hudson? Okay. Um, as soon as Ian's going to go next, and then you can go. Briggs! That's a really good question. That's a really good question. No, I think what you could say is, in that situation, you don't have to say, I read the story of the Deep Blue Sea, and it was about, although... I would be impressed if you did. But you could just say, the deep blue sea was about, or I learned about the ocean and the different types of animals that live in it, as well as how deep it is and how long it is and why it could be dark, you know, that type of thing. As long as they're complete. Jack! Ian, go ahead and go. Say it again? Yes, we are going to move on to the next page. Okay, next page. Now we're back to just the one to three words. So guys, remember, it just says one to three words. This one, when it says one to three words, you don't need to have a complete sentence for that. That's just one to three words. This, basically, this is just a, it's just taking notes. You're just writing a few pieces, right? So what is the main topic of the text? One to three words that describe the main topic of the text. Are you needing to sharpen? Yep, it broke when I picked it up. Okay, try it again. See if it works. It keeps Jack! Okay. When it comes to one topic of the text, can you pick our own paragraph? Which one are you asking? Uh, uh, when it says words that describe the main topic uh -huh. of the text, do we get to pick our own paragraph? Do you pick your own paragraph? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. So I'm actually glad you asked that because usually it has you break it down to the topics of the paragraphs. Now they're talking about the main topic of the entire thing, um, which is similar to the idea of the main idea, right? So the main topic, I would say, this is what I would say for this. I would say look at the whole thing. The, the main topic is oceans. <laughs> If you're just going to write one word about what you read in those paragraphs, oceans, right? That'd be one. You could also write, like you guys said to me in, in, the, um, in, your, uh, in your summaries, ocean animals, deep sea, cold sea, you know, all sorts of things. As soon as he gets back, you can go, okay? Andrew. Yep. Aiden, if that's not working, I'll, I'll try to get you another one. Okay, come on up. It keeps doing the same thing. Okay. So now the main idea, though, now I want a complete sentence. The main idea, that's going to be what the author was trying to get across to you. What was the main idea? What was the main idea? Wilkins? Um, what are you going to write? The main idea of the text is... That sounds kind of like a summary. 
Because you just basically told me what the entire thing was all about, right? The whole, you gave me a lot of stuff. Let's go back and look at it. Because that sounds like kind of a lot for the main idea, doesn't it? Or do you think? Okay. Now, let's look at the very last paragraph here. Where it brings us back down to this and it says, people also use it. Okay. So, kind of unlike uh, that the morning work that we had, where we had the moral of the story and it was clearly about... Um, about uh, uh, treating people the way that you want to be treated. Sometimes in articles like this, you'll find something toward the end where it kind of brings it all together and it says, um, so, you know, people and animals share the ocean. Well, it doesn't say that. However, we can infer, we're using an inference now. Do you guys know what an inference is? We talked about this, but we probably need to talk about this a bit more. When you infer something, it's basically that you are drawing connections, you're making ideas based on what you have here. So the author didn't say, didn't say straight out to you in a sentence, animals and people both use the ocean. But they did say it in different ways, right? But I would suggest when we look at main idea here, that what we're probably looking at is The ocean is a vast place, right? It's very large. It's home to a lot of different creatures. Tell me, did you go to the bathroom already? Did you just come back? Yeah. Oh, okay. It is. The ocean is large. It's home to a lot of different creatures, and people use it too, right? Yeah. Who else has something different for a main idea? Abigail, what did you write for main idea? Yeah, you could say that. The main idea is to learn something about the ocean, is to learn some facts, key facts about the ocean. Who has something different? Jed, what do you have for main idea? We're on this, uh, we're on number seven. Question number seven. Main idea. About the ocean and what lives in it. The article tells us about the ocean and what lives in it. What lives in it and uses it, right? Because we do talk about people as well. We don't live in the ocean, but we do use it. Anybody have something else? Tell them. You want to fill your water bottle? Okay, go ahead. Anybody else? Allie, what did you write for the main idea? You're still on that one. Oh, okay. Come back to your summary. I want to move on to this one. This is the best we've said so far. Main idea. What do you guys think? Wilkins, tell me a shorter version of what you said before. Sure. The main idea of the text is all about oceans, right? Okay. So you guys have a good idea there. Now, on eight, this is where I'm seeing a lot of people getting stuck. I shouldn't hear any humming or anything right now either, guys. It's very distracting. What is one key detail in the text that supports the main idea? So the main idea is, let's say, the main idea is to teach us about oceans what lives in them and who uses them. How about that? Something like that. You do not have to have exactly what I have here. I like, in fact, what you have. Brewer, no. 
This would be now the third time that you've gone during this class period. I am not going to let you guys continue to go to the bathroom that many times. In what class period? Got it. Okay, good. Jack. You need a new pencil? Yeah. Is yours broken again? Yeah, I'll give them mine. You want to let borrow yours? Okay. Let's go back up to the key details. You guys, what do I mean when I say key details? What does that mean? Allie? Yeah, that support the main idea, that tell you that you're right about what the main idea is, right? So what's a detail that tells us? There are lots of them. We've already underlined a ton of stuff. Let's go with the one that I wrote down where it talks about, uh, where I said the main idea was about teaching us about oceans, what lives in them, and who uses them. What is, what is one key detail that tells us that that's what this is about? Allie. Say it again. Yeah, that's what that is definitely part of it. It's all about oceans, right? So we're right here. Some parts of the ocean are very warm and I can swim in. Other parts are frigid, which we're gonna come back to that word again, right? So some are some parts of the ocean are, are warm, some are cold. Let's go back and take a look at that one. What is one key detail that's supposed to be made out of the text? Again, I want to I want to hear a restatement here. Restatement here. So if you were going to restate this, how would you say it? How would we write that one? Jack? So what if I said, I like where you're going, what if I said one key detail is that the text says the ocean can have different temperatures. No. Guys, I've said that several times. I swear. Are you guys listening to me? I said you do not need to write what I write. I said I would prefer that you do not just copy what I'm saying. I want you to come up with your own. I'm giving you examples based on what you guys have told me. If you are just copying this, then you are doing yourselves a disservice. That means you're only going to hurt yourself in the end because you are going to have to do these on your own and the next one I'm not going to go through with you like this. Okay? So, please, make sure you are doing the work. But, I'm giving you some examples. One key detail is that the text says the ocean can have different temperatures. Now, the next question asks how this key detail supports the main idea. How does that key detail? Now, if we were to use mine, my example here, the detail that we just pulled out, that is the one that Jack's using. I just happened to write it down slightly differently. How does that key detail support the main idea that we're learning about oceans? How does it support it? Abigail, please put your toys away again. It's the last time I asked before Red Point. How does this key detail support the main idea? Say it again, tell us. It does say it in the text, that's true. But how does it support the main idea? 
How does it support the main idea? In it. Okay, I'll give you another one. Wilkins, how does it support the main idea? Guys, please stop banging on the desk. Put your feet all the way on the ground. Thank you. That's exactly what Abigail just said. I want you guys to go further than that. Go further than that. How can we go further? Tell them. It talks about it in the text about the animals. It does talk about animals in the text, that's true, but we're talking about how this detail supports the main idea that it's teaching us about the ocean. How can we phrase this and how do we, how can, why, how? How does that key detail support it? Briggs. This is true. This is true. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is take basically what you guys said and what Brick said, and we're going to kind of combine it, okay? Because what we're trying to explain is, how does this detail, we said our key detail was that the text says the ocean can have different temperatures, and we're trying to say that this detail helps us understand that the main idea is to teach us about oceans. So we might say this detail supports the main idea because it teaches us about or you could say about different, you could even say about different Or actually, no, let's do this simple. Let's, I'm going to do this slightly simpler. We're going to write this in a slightly simpler way. It teaches us, and we're going to say this. It teaches us a key fact about oceans. This detail supports the main idea because it teaches us a key fact about oceans. Once again, you do not need to write what I wrote. You're going to do your own, but I'm showing you how you would do this, okay? Let's close new sticker for today. She's on the yellow bus getting okay. off at James. Oh, and this is different than the other ones that we have? Yeah, she's supposed to be pink today, okay. getting off at a different I got stop you. that mom called. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'm going to put it over here so I don't put it with my other one so I don't lose it. Okay. All right. Okay. She just called us and said James. Okay. Now, we've already done this part, guys. Find frigid in the text. Go ahead and look back again. Find frigid in the text. Let's go back to it. Let's use a different color again, too. Find it again, it's already underlined, and we, and a lot of us re-underlined it. Madeline used it as one of her key, uh, one of her underlined words, too. So here's frigid. Remember how I already put brackets around it, the sentence, and I already underlined things that I think support its meaning? We are looking for context clues. Context clues. What does frigid mean, Ariana? It means cold. It doesn't necessarily mean water. In this context, it means water for sure. Think about those words earlier. Frigid is a more intense version. Esten. It's blubber that keeps them warm. No, no, frigid isn't blubber. But I'm glad that you noticed that, that this was here. Only animals with thick layers of fat to keep them warm can survive in such cold, cold water. The word frigid doesn't refer to the layers of fat, but the layers of fat actually help us determine what frigid means. Why might you need blubber, blubber, thick blubber to keep warm? Essen? To keep them warm. To keep them warm. And why would you need to keep warm? Because the water so is frigid. Because the water is frigid. And so what does frigid mean? 
cold. Ariana, no. you were right, but does it just mean like cold? Like, yeah, it's kind of cold in here. Or does it mean like cold? Like, cold, oh, wow. This is the coldest I've ever felt. This is frigid. It's extremely cold. Frigid means really, really cold. Yeah, like freezing, but not necessarily frozen, but really, really cold. Does that make sense? How did we determine that though? Heston brought up one thing, he saw this. Animals need thick layers of fat, which is referred to as blubber in some cases. Whales have blubber. So he used that detail, but what else? What else, Heston? Well, if you do, yes. if you go all the way down in what? Go down in the ocean, will you get squished? By the pressure that you, yeah, we can't, we, our bodies cannot survive in that type of pressure. Okay, guys, we're moving on though. Alan, Aww. what is another detail, a context clue that told us what frigid means? You're right. You're right. Yes. It even says right here, such cold water. It's how they can survive, not even just keep warm, right? Keep them warm to survive. They need to be able to survive in such cold water. So those are good hints. Tell them. Why are you switching colors every time? Why am I switching colors? Just so that, uh, uh, that it's not all the same color. It'll get confusing. Jack. Yeah. That pencil's broken now too? <laughs> okay, try, 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 try sharpening that one. Try sharpening that one first, and we'll come back to it. So we now know. Find frigid in the text. Use the context clues to explain what the word means. Circle the word, which we did, right? And circle the words in the text that are clues to the meaning of the word. So underline circle, make sure that you guys know what we use to figure out the meaning of that word. Take them in here to circle it. And then we're going to say frigid, or you're going to write what you took from that. Frigid means cold. really cold. Make sure you go back and you're circling the parts, the clues, the context clues, the parts we found it. Schmidt. That's okay. That is perfect. That is perfectly fine. Violet. Frigid means the most cold. The most cold. Frigid. It's very cold. Aiden. Let's pull it. Frigid means very cold. You can say that. Exactly. Perfect. Good. Jack. Can I do the next one? So the next one here, find enter in the text. Use context clues to explain what this word means. And you're going to do the same thing. So the words in the text that are clues to the meaning. Okay, let's go back up to that one. I suspect, oops, I went too far. I suspect this one is maybe a little bit easier for you guys. Since I think you hear this word a lot more often, right? So Jack, what does enter mean? Entering the deep sea. Well, what does it say right here? Since we're talking about people, right? In this context, we're using the context clues from here. Yeah. And you used a good example. But what is a definition? What's our definition for enter? How do we define it? How do you define it? Nick, what does enter mean? Like go through something. Go through something? In the context of the ocean, what do you think it means? So Nick's right, like you can enter the classroom, right? But if it was the ocean, what does it mean? Hold on. It doesn't have to do with the deep sea. 
Not in this context. We're looking at this context right here in the story. I promise you it's easier than we think. So look at this. Read this one more time, this sentence. Some may not even enter the water because they like to lounge on the beach and get a tan instead. So if they're lounging on the beach and they're getting a tan, um, Nick, are they getting in the water? Well, they're, they're lounging on the beach and relaxing, you're right, but does that, if they want to do that instead, instead of entering the water. So if I say instead of entering the water, are they getting in the water? No, they're not getting in the water. No. In this context, enter would mean to get in. Get in. It means to go, to go into the water. And the context here is telling us that there are people who don't go in the water. Instead of getting in the water, they just lay on the beach and get tans, right? They relax, they get tans, because they're not getting in the water. In this case, they are not entering it. Says so some people may not even enter the water. So to define enter, you have to look at the rest of that sentence. And if it says instead is our keyword, because if it says they would like to lounge on the beach instead of entering the water, what they're implying here is that these people aren't getting in the water. And then you have to think back to yourself, oh, wait a minute, that means enter means to get in the water. Does that make sense, guys? No. When I said it's to knock or to go in. You say, say that one more time. To knock or go in. To go in. Let's go down to that one. Enter in the text, use context clues, circle the words in the text. I'm going to say enter means to go in. It does means to go in. To enter something is to go in. To exit is to get out. Right? So you enter the room in the morning, you exit the room to go to lunch or to leave. Same thing with the ocean though, right? You would enter off the beach, enter into the water, unless you're one of those people who never gets in, and instead you lay out a beach towel, put some suntan lotion on, even though it's bad for you, and then you lay on the on the towel and get sunburned. I mean tanned. Did you say sunburned? Lots of people get sunburned. That's why that oil is bad for you. It's almost like, think about it this way. When you watch your, your parents cook, sometimes they put oil in the pan when they're about to cook things. Yeah. Think about it this way. You're out in the sun, you put oil on your bodies. Most people don't do this anymore. Some people still do. Uh, you're basically cooking yourself in the sunlight. That's why people get burned. That's why instead you should put on sunscreen so that you don't get sunburned. Don't, don't put on suntan lotion, put on sunscreen. 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 I really want the screen though. Not scream, screen. I know, so don't put on some screen. Don't put on scream. I don't even know how you would do that. You would basically turn Samsung. on the TV to the movie screen. The movie scream? Yeah, exactly. Okay guys, moving on, moving on. It is almost sunshine. You know what? We might have run a little low on time here today, guys. Ten minutes. Yeah, I think we need to, I think we might need to come back to this last one. Oh, really? And the reason I'm saying that is because I did also promise you guys that we could do Share Day and Student Store. So, um, okay, class, class. Yes, yes. I did run a little low on time. It is 11.50 right now. So, here's what we're going to do. Class, class. Yes, yes. If you have, go ahead. If you've got those, go ahead and put them back. Quickly, quickly. Here's what we're going to do. Go ahead and clean up your tables. Put your stuff away. If you have something to share, we can do that right now.